All right, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Bill Hardenrader, best-selling author of Mars Journey, Call to Action, and online community ambassador for the Mars Society. I'm here today with an amazing guest, Alyssa Carson. Welcome, Alyssa. Hi. How's it going? So where, where are you coming? Uh, where are you broadcasting from today? Uh, well, I'm currently at the space camp in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, I mean, we had just run up here just to spend like a couple of days, just kind of looking around, um, meeting with some old friends, and just kind of spend a couple of days up here. Okay, well, awesome. We appreciate you taking time out of your out of your schedule. What we're gonna do is uh, read through your bio, and then we'll we'll get started into your 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 personal journey, where what path you're on, and, and where you're you're looking to go. So. Uh, ever since she was a little girl, Alyssa Carson has had her heart set on the stars. At only three years old, she told her father, Daddy, I want to be an astronaut and be one of the people that go to Mars. Uh, he had no idea that the seemingly offhand statement would actually become the birth of a meaningful lifelong endeavor. At just 15 years old, Alyssa's list of accomplishments include witnessing three space shuttle launches, attending space camp seven times, space academy three times, robotics academy once, youngest to graduate advanced space academy, and multiple Sally ride camps. Uh, looking down here, she was later selected as one of the seven ambassadors representing Mars One, a mission to establish a human colony on Mars in 2030. In October of 2016, Alyssa was the youngest to be accepted and graduate the Advanced Possum Academy, officially making her certified to go to space and an astronaut trainee. And more than anything, Alyssa is driven by an insatiable desire to live life to the fullest, to break through the ceiling of possibility and make a positive and lasting impact on the world. I love it. So let's jump right into it. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, getting started at three years old. How, what, what, what's your journey? How, how did you, how did you get started? And 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 um, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, really, exactly how you said. I mean, I was watching this television show, and kind of the way the show worked was the characters went on an imaginary adventure every episode. And so as I was watching as a little three-year-old, I wanted to be one of their friends and go on the imaginary adventures with them. Yeah. And so uh, one of the episodes was A Mission to Mars. And so right after that episode, I just really asked my dad if it was possible for humans to go to Mars, if you know it was actually a thing that you could do. Yeah. And he told me everything that he knew about the uh, lunar landing, um, you know, the little bit he knew about space. And then from there, I was just wanting more and more and more information. So I kept asking for, you know, books, posters, videos, kind of anything I could get my hands on to learn more about space and about Mars. And uh, as I got older, I continued kind of studying the stuff I had. Uh, and then it wasn't until I was around seven, which is the first time I came to the space camp in Huntsville, Alabama, where I really learned everything that I had been wanting to know about space. Wow. And um, how old are you now? Where, what grade or what, what level of education are you at? Uh, I'm 16, so I'm a sophomore in high school. Very cool. How, how do things go with uh, with your classmates, knowing that um, you're you're on the path to become an astronaut? I mean, it's pretty. I think it's pretty cool because I keep a very balanced life. So, kind of to my friends and classmates, I'm not really like Alyssa Carson wanting to become an astronaut and go to Mars. It's more like just a normal teenage girl, like another person at the high school. So. Um, Really, it's kind of just having that balanced life about, you know, doing all of this as far as my training and then also just being a normal kid who thinks everybody else does. So uh, I, I played sports. A lot of people play sports. It seems your sport is training to be an astronaut. What, what's some of the training that you've gone through? Um, so I started out by just doing different simulators. So uh, some of these simulators include maybe doing a simulated mission. Uh, doing some simulators that are, for example, like a tumble spin in space where the spacecraft spins out of control, um, doing different gravity simulators, seeing how that feels. Uh, and then uh, the Possum Academy that I went to uh, last October, there I did some more intense training, which is why it actually certified me as official astronaut trainee. And so some of the things I did there was uh, we did some pretty intense G-force training. So we would go up in an airplane and They'd fly the plane, do like 4G turns, and fly upside down, do inverse Gs. Uh, we did a bunch of pretty cool stuff like that. Um, I also did hypoxia, which is uh, decompression. So they start taking the oxygen from your atmosphere, and then you learn your personal symptoms about what happens uh, when you start losing oxygen, because everyone's is different. Uh, and so that way, you know, if there is a slow decompression, you can see, hey, I have these symptoms, something must be wrong, I can put on a mask. And so I learned how to do all that, uh, different spacesuit trainings, um, you know, putting on a spacesuit, seeing what it is being in a pressure, in your own kind of pressurized environment, because um, you're basically in your own little world in there. And so that's kind of some of the things I've done as well as 
um, kind of getting my uh, scuba certification and also working on my pilot's license. Nice. Now, are you able to work with uh, your, your teachers uh, to kind of um, choose curriculum that's in, in line? Like, obviously, you know what you want to do. You're driven and, and you're doing it. Are you able to, are you still taking the, the home ec courses? Are you able to, you know, take the classes that you want? I'm curious. Uh, I would say that just even like everyone at my school kind of has the opportunity because for your junior and senior year, we work on the International Baccalaureate Diploma. And so that is similar to AP, but uh, it's called IB, and IB is no more in foreign countries because we're an international school. Okay. So that's why we work on that. And so with that, you pick your own six classes. So you have a choice. So for me, um, for the next two years of high school, all of my higher level classes will be uh, biology, physics, and math. So I've definitely geared my schedule to be more math and science to kind of help me out for the future. That's awesome. So. Um... So uh, obviously you get a lot going on, but I want to circle back to some of your some of your influences um, along the way. Maybe some of the obviously watching TV and watching that that show. What are some other influences that maybe started making you realize that you're on on the right path? Uh, definitely some of just the people that I've gone to meet over the years have kind of just continued to inspire me to keep working towards this. Uh, someone in particular is uh, astronaut Sandra Magnus. Uh, I met her when I was pretty young, and it was at a one of these Sally Ride camps, actually, and it was in Louisiana, where I'm from, and uh, I was talking to her, and I was about around nine years old at the time when I was talking to her, and she was telling me all this information about where she started, how she started, and she told me that at nine years old, she decided to become an astronaut, and then I was looking at her, and she had already been to space several times. At the time, she was planning on going on another mission, and so she just kind of motivated me and showed me that you can decide what you want to do at a young age and then work hard at it and eventually pursue that goal. And so that kind of inspired me and motivated me to keep going, um, as well as just having, like, my dad support me and everything and just, like, continuing uh, to be, like, by my side and me wanting to do all these crazy things. Um, and then I would definitely say uh, I know some of the shows, I guess I can mention, like, some things that I've watched, uh, like, I know Cosmos, uh, that Neil deGrasse Tyson did. Um, that was pretty cool. I mean, because I'm all about, you know, learning more about it. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think the most, like the biggest thing is just meeting the people and hearing what their jobs were in uh, the space program and how they got there, what they're doing and what's really next. Yeah. Yeah. And so what, what is, what is next for, uh, for you training wise, um, curriculum wise? Well, the next kind of big thing is this summer, um, I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff, uh, uh, throughout the summer uh, since I'm off school so I can spend more time doing training things. So I'm going to be spending a week down in uh, Kennedy, down Cape Canaveral, um, learning some things. I am also going to be coming back up to Huntsville for about two weeks this summer um, and then doing some more uh, simulations and things like that. Yeah. And then the big thing is I'm going to be going to northern Canada and I'm going to be doing a high altitude mission kind of over the kind of northern territories in Canada and there uh, we'll go up around like 25,000 feet and we'll actually be taking pictures of these uh, clouds in the upper atmosphere and so that's kind of like a big high altitude mission so that's kind of my next step getting a little bit a little bit closer yeah. uh, up in the atmosphere yeah I think what's great about about um, wanting to go to Mars us as a, as a species is is we realize how, how beautiful our planet is um, here. And it, it's great that I hear you get to travel, see, experience um, our planet, our, our world in, in, in different ways to, to plan um, to go off off planet. So why why do you think, uh, I'm curious, um, you think that uh, you're individually driven to go to Mars, but maybe on a broader scale, what are your, what are your thoughts on humans getting to Mars and, and why that's important? Well, I think that now that I've really gotten older and kind of understand more about kind of the benefits we get from going to Mars, I feel like also that has really motivated me to uh, actually keep working towards it because at first it was all about, you know, why not go to Mars? No one has ever been there. There's so many things that we can discover and it's still that. At the same time, it's also thinking about how we are, how a single planet species will become extinct. So if we stay on Earth forever and ever, and, you know, this is in the far future, but, you know, if the sun were to burn out um, like a star would do and then where would we go? And I really believe that like Mars is that first step and kind of showing people that we can actually travel to another planet. Uh, we have the technology to do that. We are 
again to that point where we can move on uh, from Earth and possibly even live on another planet. So I think just getting a group of astronauts to land on Mars and start that exploration, seeing what else we can find, make new discoveries, uh, and then that just kind of shows everyone else here on Earth that it's possible, and then we can start moving forward. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Okay, great. So I, I want to switch into um, kind of some some top tips, some top lessons you learned, and, and maybe if for for other people that are um, your age or younger that are um, wanting to become astronauts, what are some things that you'd pass on to them? I would just say first, kind of the first step is really just to figure out what kind of subject in school you're interested in because uh, that's just really a good place to start. Um, you know, you go to those classes every day, so just find one that you're really interested in, um, you know, math, science, history, whatever it is. And then once you figure out, kind of narrow that down, then just kind of look into all the possibilities that you can go into within that subject. Because like if you just take math, for example, you can do uh, you know, becoming a math teacher and becoming a mathematician. And those are two completely different things. Sure. Uh, you take two completely different studies to go to those places. So just kind of look at all your options that you can go into. And then once you really find kind of something that maybe piques your interest, look into it, talk about it, uh, ask people about it, see what else you can find. And even just like maybe finding someone in your area who already has that job uh, can be a huge help and seeing how they got there, what they did. Um, for some advice and then kind of make that your dream and make that your goal and never give up on it and really just never let anyone take that dream away from you because uh, it's something you want to do something you're passionate about then go for it no that's that's great uh, advice um, good way to live life and uh, good lesson to, to pass on what about um, do you have to are you currently I mean your focus is becoming an astronaut and to get to Mars do you study up on on Mars itself a lot Mars um, atmosphere and you know radiation levels and things of that nature I'm curious I mean I would say that I mean I try to I try to stay ahead on everything that's going on but definitely I do try to keep my studies up to par <laughs> well from um, your perspective what are what are what are some of the bigger the bigger challenges for us to actually get there I mean some of the big challenges right now is uh, kind of managing kind of the weight that we're going to, kind of the weight of the spacecraft that's going to Mars, because we need to figure out, you know, what we want to bring the most of. So um, seeing uh, some problems, you know, our food supply, what are we going to do about that for the mission to Mars, since it's about six months to get there. Uh, what are we going to do about the radiation levels in between uh, Earth and Mars? Uh, and so those are definitely some of the bigger problems that we're facing right now. And I mean, all of them have different ideas for different solutions. So we do have a bunch of have solutions up in the air to solve all these problems. Um, but it's just all about kind of narrowing down which one we want to actually choose and actually uh, go for it. But I would say that's kind of what we're mainly looking at. No, and that's great. People have different interests and specialties and skills because they can work on different different parts of the mission. Um, so we're, we're actually going to come um, come to the end of uh, the uh, of this interview for now, like I said, I really appreciate you taking taking the time away from uh, from space camp and uh, your training. But um, do you have any 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 final words, anything that you would want to say, just to the people that are, that are listening? Uh, just thank you for having me, and yeah, just always follow your dreams and never give up. Okay, awesome. Where where can we find you? What's your website? Uh, my website is nasablueberry.com, and from there is the links to every other kind of social media. I mean, it's all under NASA Blueberry. Awesome. Well, we'll all post those links below as well. It's uh, been a real pleasure interviewing you today. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Thank you. And for everybody watching or listening to this right now, if you, if you like this, uh, give it a thumbs up or, or give some uh, five-star rating and subscribe, and we'll see you or um, hear you on the next interview. Thanks and take care.